Hello, welcome to another video session. Um, this time I'll be talking about connective tissues. Uh, basically, I'll be talking about the types of connective tissues and an element that constitute uh, the various connective tissues. This is a shorter version of my previous uh, video. So let's begin. What are some examples of connective tissues? We have tendons, we have ligaments, we have bones, we have blood, we have adipose tissue or fat tissue, we have connective tissue, and then we can also add cartilage um, to the list of connective tissues that we have. Where does connective tissue come from? Connective tissue comes from the middle layer of the embryonic tissue known as the mesoderm, right? So the embryo has the outer coat or the outer layer, which is the ectoderm. You have the middle layer known as the mesoderm, the inner layer that is known as the endoderm. The Connective tissue originates from the mesoderm, all right? That's the same area that you have the muscle tissues um, originating. How do you classify connective tissues? They can be class classified as dense connective tissue, loose connective tissue, or fatty connective tissue. Now, the, the dense connective tissue, they have large amounts of collagen fibers arranged um, parallel to each other, and they are closely packed. Examples are the ligaments, the tendons, aponeurosis, fascia, and the fibrous uh, capsules. These are just some examples of areas that you can find dense connective tissue. Then we have the loose connective tissue. Um, this type of tissue, have relatively few collagen fibers, a large amount of ground substance and tissue fluid. And then the fatty connective tissues have large amount of fat cells in them. So these are some of the ways in which connective tissue can be classified. Now, what goes into making connective tissue? There are three types of fibers that constitute um, the connective tissues, or you find the connective tissues. These are the collagen fibers, elastic fibers, and then reticular fibers. Um, let's look at what each of these entails. Now, the fibrous collagen fibers, or the collagen fibers, they are fibrous in nature. Um, they are white, insoluble fibrous proteins um, that break down in water into soluble gelatin or glue. In other words, if you uh, put the collagen in water, it can dissolve into a gelatin or become glue. Uh, they are present in all connective tissues. The fibers can be arranged either regularly or irregularly and with the strands lined up parallel to each other. And that is the, reg the regular pattern. You have the strands in parallel um, arrangements. Uh, irregularly arranged fibrous connective tissues are found in areas of the body where stress occurs from all directions, such as the dermis of the skin. Um, the regular fibrous connective tissue usually find them in, in, in tendons, which connect muscles to bones, and then ligaments, which connect bones to bones. Okay. The dense connective tissues have closely packed collagen fibers, whereas the loose Connective tissues have loosely packed collagen uh, fibers. This is a picture of the fibrous connective tissue. So you can see the parallel arrangement of the collagen fibers in this particular one. They're closely packed. So this is an example of a dense connective tissue. And you see the fibroblast, which we'll talk about later, one of the cells that you find in the in the connective tissue that produces the collagen. Now in the tendons, the collagen fibers run out to each other and they have a high tensile strength. So you can pull straight them 
you know, to some extent, right? It's you kind of stretch it forever. And if you go beyond a certain stress level or force, it's going to break apart. But in, they have a high tensile strength, so they can withstand um, a lot of forces. Now, collagen is produced by the fibroblast, and vitamin C is needed for collagen uh, production. And that's why vitamin C is good for wound um, healing. Steroids and cortisol are some chemicals that can inhibit the production of collagen in the body. So they can inhibit the healing of wounds. Okay. Now the elastic fibers, which you usually find, you find in the loose areolar connective tissue, that's another name for kind of tissue where you find a lot of elastic fiber, fibers. Um, the elastic fiber, they form a single, you find them in a single arrangement, right? And they undergo branching so as to form a diffuse network, as you can see in this um, diagram. Um, they form like a diffuse net, net, network in the second diagram that you see in this on, on this slide. Okay. Um, the, elastic, the elasticity of the skin is due to the presence of the elastic fibers that are attached to the dermis and then the epidermis of the skin. Okay? So they make the skin elastic. If you stretch it, it can recall back to its original um, shape. As people grow older, they lose the elasticity of the skin. So it takes a lot of while for the skin to come back to, or to recall to its normal um, position or shape as compared to a younger individual. Then when you talk about the reticular fibers, the reticular fibers, they form a thin branching network, mm -hmm. right? Usually find them in lymph nodes and other blood forming organs. Um, and it's probably a preliminary stage in the formation of collagen um, fibers. This is because when there's a wound, the first fiber that you see are the reticular fibers. Those are the fibers that you see at the beginning. And later on, the, um, you see a large amount of collagen fibers forming uh, from them. Okay. So that's why it's thought to be probably the preliminary stage in the formation of the collagen fibers. Um, you can demonstrate this by, the, by using the, the presence, you can demonstrate the presence of the reticular fibers by doing the silver impregnation uh, test. So now let's talk about some of the cells that you find in the connective tissue, right? The cells I find in the connective tissue include the fibroblast, the macrophages, primitive mesenchymal cells, mast cells, fat cells, pigment cells, plasma cells, and blood cells. So these are some of the cells that you find in connective tissue. Let's delve a little bit into the details of each of these. Let's start with the fibroblast. The fibroblasts are usually close to collagen because they produce the collagen, right? They have large oval nucleus with little chromatin and one or two nuclei, right? Um, they play a role in wound healing because since they form the, they produce a the collagen, right? This is a diagram of how the fibroblast looks. Sometimes you see when they are in the active stage, you see the processes on the surface, the cytoplasmic um, processes that you can see on the slide. Okay, so it's a typical cell having all the nucleus and the plasma reticulum, ribosomes, Golgi apparatus, mitochondria, and so on. Now let's look at macrophages. The macrophages are present in loose connective tissues. See, see them mostly in loose connective tissues and they are phagocytic. I mean, that means they can engulf particles, you know, engulf. so they, they engulf bacteria and other debris that um, are left over during um, infections and so on. Um, they store vital stains such as uh, trypan blue, you know, so that's why they, they appear um, bluish. Look at this diagram with bluish purplish color. That, that is a, a typical example of a macrophage. You can see the nucleus, very large um, nucleus in there. Then 
the main function, as I've just said, the fight of infection. Now the macrophages um, usually can come from the monocytes, right? That's in the, in the blood. The monocytes in the blood can move from the blood into the connective tissue and then they form their residence there as macrophages. Then we also have the primitive mesenchymal cells. What are they? Um, they are scattered irregularly throughout the connective tissue. They are also close to capillary wall. And they're also called the adventitial cells. They are persistent undifferentiated cells of the primitive mesenchyme, right? So the mesenchyme are the cells that we find in the mesodermal layer of embryonic um, tissue, right? So these cells are undifferentiated and they can, under, under the appropriate stimuli, they can become macrophages or other cells. And then the mast cells, the mast cells. The mast cells, they are filled with large granules. They stain metachromatically. And in other words, they stain purple with toluidine blue, right? When it's say metachromatically, it means that it picks up the stain and has a different color than the, what the stain um, is, right? So here, you see the staining purple when you add the toluidine blue to it, right? So that says metachromically, stains metachromatically. Okay, chroma has to do with color, right? Um, and they occur in groups close to capillaries. And what's the function of these muscles? The muscles play an important role in allergic reactions and anaphylactic reactions and so on, right? So they secret histamine and heparin. Why heparin? You need a heparin to prevent clotting of blood. So if you have any fibroblasts going into the blood stream um, from the connective tissue, right? It's, it's gonna trigger some form of clotting. So we don't want that. So the presence of heparin in there, in the muscles, help to prevent formation of blood clots with, you know, just in case you have um, a cell like a fibroblast get into the wrong place in the blood. We also have the fat cells. Uh, the fat cells, these are small droplets of cells containing fats, right? Usually you find, you can find them in the fibroblast and other connective tissues. They are usually small droplets in these fibroblasts and connective tissues. But in the true fat cells, right, the fat completely fills out the whole cell, right? So as you can see here, you have the cell, the bulk of it is the, the fat, the re reservoir of fat, and the nucleus is pushed close to the cell membrane, right? So they occur, they, they tend to occur close to black capillaries as single cells. And accumulation of cells in adipose tissue. So adipose tissues, you see they accumulated like what you have in the diagram on this right side here. You know, when they accumulate in it, then they have like adipose tissue, large collection of fat cells. And then the pigment cells, the pigment cells, they are small branch pigment cells found in the dermis. They contain melanin. Melanin is a pigment, right? That gives the skin its dark color. Um, they are produced by the melanocyte or melanoblast. The melanoblast can become, when activated, becomes melanocyte and they produce melanin. Okay. So there are cells that contain um, pigments that we call the pigmented or pigment cells. Then we have the plasma cells. Uh, the plasma cells, they are found in lymphoid tissues. This is a diagram of a plasma cell. All right? Usually plasma cells are formed when the B lymphocytes you know, are activated and they change to the plasma cells that will in turn produce antibodies, right? They produce antibodies. So they have small eccentric nucleus with basophilic cytoplasm. You know, it's a cytoplasm stains with a basic stain. Okay, so they appear bluish or purplish, bluish as you see. So they're basophilic cytoplasms. And they have closely packed concentric lamellae of 
endoplasmic reticulum. Okay. And as I've just said, they produce, when activated, they produce the, they produce the antibodies, the fight of infections. And then lastly, we have the blood cells also in the connective tissue. Uh, some of the blood cells that we have in the connective tissue are the red blood cells, and then you have the white blood cells, which consist of the monocytes, the lymphocytes, the neutrophils, the eosinophils, um, the basophils. You find all these in the connective tissue. Um, the cells that originate from the blood and move into the connective tissue, we refer to them as hematogenous cells. And those that, are, that originate from the connective tissue are what we refer to as the histogenous cells. Um, I hope you enjoy this uh, short video of connective tissue. Uh, watch out for my other videos where I'm gonna talk in, into detail about different examples of connective tissue, right? And talk about the blood in detail, cartilage in detail, um, adipose tissues in details and so on. So watch out for my next video on that. See you soon.